you really want to complete that artistic project, whether it be photography, writing a book, illustration, whatever it might be. But every time you sit down to work, you are so stressed out. You can't get anything done. You hate everything you do. You feel like you're wasting time. Maybe you're not as good as you thought you were. I think part of that problem might just be how you schedule your time. I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about flexible scheduling and taking breaks. Why sometimes not working can get you to work better. One of the problems we often have, especially if we are doing something in the creative field as a secondary endeavor, that is, it's your second job, you're trying to do it on the side, if you will, side gig, however you wanna call it, we try to compress too much into too small a space and then we often fail. This comes from burnout, it comes from lack of motivation, and the motiva lack of motivation comes because we don't feel like we're actually succeeding. What we really need to do sometimes is take a step back and take a break. In this video, we're gonna discuss exactly why that is and there's even science behind it. So let's get to it. I wanna take a second to talk about something called the Yerkes, I think that's how you say it, Yerkes Dotson Law, which is basically this, they did a series of tests, Yerkes and Dotson, uh, back in the early part of the, well, I guess it was last century. And they basically determined that we need a certain level of stress or arousal, as it would be, to do anything, right? If we, if we aren't aroused or, or stressed to do something, we'll just kind of lay around, right? If we're not motivated, we won't do anything. But too much stress will make us work at less than peak performance. So the idea here is there's somewhere in the middle. And what we get is a curve. It looks like an upside down U. And at the peak of this is our peak performance, where we are motivated the most, where we get the best work done, where we are the best we can be. And this is basically something we can use when we think about how we plan our days, how we plan our projects, how we think about our lives in general. We want to give ourselves enough stress, if you will, to be motivated to do our best, but not so much stress that we will just completely burn out and just not do our best, if do anything at all. So long story short, if we give ourselves such a tight schedule that it's nearly impossible to complete, so we're constantly under stress, we're not going to do our best work if we complete the task at all. But if we give ourselves enough time, enough space to breathe, but enough stress to make sure we actually get it done, we will do our best work. Let's take a second to talk about scheduling. <laughs> this is one of the big things when we talk about productivity. There's lots of different ways to do it, and I will kind of poke in here and there throughout this video and talk about different ways, but right now I wanna talk in a more kind of overall sense. The idea of a strict schedule versus flexible creativity. And the main kind of overarching idea here is that with a strict schedule, for instance, I get up, I do my work, whatever, at 10 a.m. I'm going to sit down for one hour and I'm going to write one page of my novel. Because maybe your overall goal is to write a novel in six months, okay? If you say, at 10 a.m. I'm going to write a page of my novel and then you have at 11 a.m. I'm going to make two illustrations for my novel. And then at 12, I have some work that I do where I work remotely. At two o'clock, I go to this class at this, and you give yourself these really tight schedules. What will happen is, if you are not on the ball, if you will, if you're not fully motivated at 10 a.m. To, to do the writing, you won't quite get it done, which will then make you feel bad about it, <laughs> which will make you less motivated to do it the next time you sit down at 10 a.m. And next thing you start to realize, you're not writing at all because you, you feel like you can't do it but with a more flexible schedule saying, okay, I'm writing and illustrating this book. I need to have seven pages done a week. So now instead of saying one page, 10 a.m. to 11, you're saying seven pages over the course of the week. Every day you say, you put on your list of things, write or illustrate. And when that artistic endeavor seems like it feels right to do, you'll do it. I found that sometimes doing something completely different than what I'm supposed to be doing is the best way to get going on the thing I'm supposed to do. And I'm not talking about procrastination and going and watching a TV show, although maybe watching a TV show is mo motivates you. I mean, just kind of doing stuff that I feel like doing in the moment, but keeping in mind at all times that I do have big overarching tasks. What this does is it prevents burnout, 
allows us to work when we are motivated, and it gives us the flexibility and kind of permission, if you will, to do the things we want to do when we want to do them. The idea that we should put off being creative because right now we have to do the accounting is not a good idea if your main goal is to be creative. Yes, at some point you will have to do the accounting, but there'll be, there'll be a moment where you have nothing to do, you're not motivated to do anything else, and, and that's when you do the things that maybe aren't the most exciting things for you. Let's take a second to talk about motivation. Here I'm gonna kind of break down some ideas that you can use, or techniques if you will, to kind of stay motivated. The first thing is, what we wanna do is set clear goals. This is a big deal. How you set and create your deadlines is key, right? And we need to prioritize what's important. If we need to have photos to put on the website, then setting the schedule to shoot the photos is more important than the website. However, if the person that we want to photograph can't, isn't available for a month, well then we prioritize doing the website and just putting in whatever we have to swap out the new photos when we get them. This way, we're being productive, we're doing the tasks, and we're not kind of making excuses as to why we're not. One thing we want to do is always break our tasks into lots of small tasks. And eventually, once you get into a rhythm of doing this, you can kind of do a lot of that in your head. I mean, still do it on paper, but when you're first learning it, really get crazy with it. Break down everything. You need to pack your camera bag, pack my camera, pack my lens, pack my charger, pack my battery. Think about all those things as individual tasks. Now think about that on a much bigger level, right? You need to do a full production photo shoot. Now you can think to yourself, ah, packing a camera bag, packing for a massive shoot, organizing a small shoot, organizing a large shoot. It's the same thing, it just needs to be broken down into small steps. Another thing that really helps here is to always try to remember why you wanted to do the thing you're doing. What is the kernel of it? If you have a long-term project, let's say to make 12 portraits, and you encounter a difficult subject. You know you want to photograph this subject because they fulfill a certain point of what you're trying to do, but it's just difficult. It can be easy to kind of feel like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, but remember the big picture. Remember why you're doing this and dig into it on that one subject to make sure it works for you. Don't give up the whole thing just because one part of the task is difficult. All right, so a few things we can do just generally, and I'm gonna do a whole video on kind of environment, but make sure that when you are working, you give yourself a space that you can work cleanly. Don't set up on the kitchen table with your kids running around and the phone ringing for work and this and that when you're trying to write your novel. You won't get it done. Give yourself a place that's free from distractions, turn off all your social stuff. I always do not disturb on my, phone, on my watch because that's the one that always gets me. And just dig into it, right? Give yourself a time limit if you feel like if there's something else you have to do, like let's say in two hours you have to do something else, set an alarm and just put the alarm away. That way you're not thinking about it. Dig in, don't be distracted. Give yourself a private space. Give yourself the time to be successful. Another thing we can do is really consider ourself, right? Taking breaks, giving ourselves a moment to stretch, kind of looking at what we've accomplished and feeling good about it. Yes, you want to do 12 images and you've only got two done, only two. Well, you didn't have any done before you started, right? Every step along the way is a small success. This is why breaking things up into small chunks really helps because you can say, I did that, I did that, and you know you're making those steps towards where you gotta end up eventually. One thing I found that can help if you really are just starting to do something that you, you know it's part of a larger task, you really wanna do this task, but this little part has to be done and it's not your favorite thing to do. For me, that would be editing images. You can give yourself little rewards. Maybe that reward is a few minutes to watch a YouTube video. Maybe that reward is a piece of candy or a nice cup of coffee. Whatever it is, give yourself something, little things, where it's not super distracting, where, okay, I'm going to have this piece of candy after I finish doing this. After a while, it becomes kind of like Pavlov's dogs, right? But it works. Get ourselves in the mindset. We start associating the task with the positive thing, the fresh cup of coffee, and not the negative, sitting in front of my computer doing math. One of the most important things to remember is motivation will just come, and it will just go. And you can do these things to kind of help yourself stay in the right position so you can have the optimum amount of, amount of motivation, if you will, but it's not always gonna work. 
Don't beat yourself up if you're not motivated. Sometimes there might be a different task you're motivated to do and that's what you should do. Many of us, when we get going and we're really cranking out the work, we forget to do the most basic thing, which is take a break. Even though you're in the flow, I made a rhyme there, you need to give yourself steady breaks. You don't wanna wait till you're absolutely exhausted and over it and forcing yourself to work before you stop. There's some writing advice you hear quite often that you should end while you're still writing, which is really great advice. That's true for any artistic endeavor. While you're at the high of it, that's the best time to stop, especially if you're going to be doing it every day. Because when you step back into it, you're already rolling. You're, you've got some ideas going and you're there. Great to start the next time, right? You're not starting with a blank page, so to speak. This is why breaks are great. Now, that's breaks for the day, but also while you're working, it's a good idea to take a break. I find that every hour or so, I take about 10 minutes. And when you take a break, don't just stop writing or doing the photography or drawing or whatever you're doing and start looking at your phone. That's not the break I'm talking about. Because in some level, that's also work, right? Because psychologically, we want to check our social media. We want to check it on people. That's something we have to do. And that will be work. Your break should be something completely separate. So things that I like to do, I like to get up. And generally, that's when I refresh my coffee. I'm a big coffee drinker. So when I get up, I go, I get a fresh co cup of coffee. I kind of enjoy it while it's hot. It's not that like lukewarm, nor like when I'm normally working, like I'm sipping on the coffee, and, but it's that fresh cup right out of the, the, the machine. And that's great for me. I also will go outside, work from home. So I will go outside and walk around a little bit, stretch myself. Sometimes I'll literally just do stretches. I'll, I'll do various types of stretching, which is very good, especially when you're hunched over things or doing photography and you're like this all day. Do things that are different than what you were doing before. This also means, even though I have tried this and maybe it would work for you, but for me, I don't like stop, let's say for an hour when I'm working on doing writing or whatever, to then read. <laughs> because reading and writing and still stressing my eyes looking, I found that doesn't give me the proper break. For me, if I'm on an electronic device, like I'm on the computer or I'm using my cameras, I try to go away from that and I go analog. If I'm doing something like a project outside, doing gardening, let's say, that kind of work, then for my break, I might come in and watch a video on YouTube because that's a different kind of break. I'm clearing my mind of what was going on so that I can kind of start again fresh. But because I stopped while I was still rolling, when I sit back down, I'll see where I was at and get right back into it with newfound energy. One more thing I want to add here is there I was talking about short breaks, but I've also taken to not working every day. And I know that might sound a little crazy for some people, but when you work for yourself, you find yourself after a while working every day. Like even if it's not eight hours a day, every single day you're doing some work. And I've given myself permission, which is what you have to do, to take a day off every week where I just don't work at all. Now, tying back into the <laughs> flexible creativity, if I wake up, my day is Sunday, if I wake up on Sunday and I'm motivated to write something, I will do it. But as soon as it starts to weigh on me, done. Because that's my day off and I don't do that. If I get up on Sunday, I don't feel like ever turning my computer on or looking at my phone or doing whatever, that's what I do because that's my day to take a break. Let's take a second to dive into deadlines. Deadlines to me are basically the main motivator for us in this type of flexible creativity. That is to say, the deadline is the end goal. And all along the way, all these other things we're doing are steps to get there. We're not focused on the deadline all the time. Hopefully we finish before the deadline, but it's there. It's looming just in case we get off track. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about setting deadlines here and kind of how to work with them. One thing we want to do when setting deadlines is be realistic. This may be difficult if you're doing a task that you haven't done before. And you might think to yourself, well, it only takes this long, so I'm going to set this deadline. And then you start stressing yourself out because you cannot make it. So the first thing I'm gonna say here is, 
especially in new tasks, and it's not, let's say, a commercial project, set flexible deadlines. That is to say, set a deadline, not right before you get to it, but as you start moving towards it, reevaluate it. So let's say I'm doing a long-term project. I'm writing a novel. And this is going to take me six months, I decide. At the end of each month, I should reevaluate where I am in several different ways. One will be to say, okay, if I keep going at the pace I'm going, will I make my deadline? The second way is to, is to really truly say, was I motivated enough to work on it at the speed that got me here, or did I have to force myself to work at this speed? Okay, so I just threw a number out there and I was like, make something that seems realistic, so what does that even mean? So this is the best way I've found to set deadlines. When we look at a project, like let's say for instance, my project as a photographer, I decide I'm going to revamp my portfolio because I want to get a certain different kind of work, let's say. I really have been enjoying this as my kind of personal work and now I wanna do it commercially, so I need images to promote that. What you want to do is sit down and look at the end goal. Imagine what it looks like. Okay, for me, it is 12 brand new images that represent what I want to offer now commercially. Those images should be relatively new because you want to show your newest work. They should be the type of images that I can show people. That is, I have the rights to them in the way that I already talked to the people I'm photographing. Since I'm a portrait photographer, I got their permission. Hey, I'm going to be using your images for this. All that stuff. Because even if you do have the rights copyright-wise, you know, we want to build good relationships in our life. We want to make sure we have 12 images that are usable, that fit this thing, and that will work for where I want to put them. Where am I going to put these images? I'm going to use them for here. I'm going to use them for here. Because just having those 12 images is not a complete goal to me. The goal is to revamp it to get different kinds of work. So the first part of the goal is to think about the images. But then the second part is, where are they going to be? That's why I say, think about the future, right? So let's say I'm going to have these 12 images. They're going to be the kind of keystones for my website. And I'm going to sprinkle them through my Instagram with other images as well from those sets. That's my plan. And I'm going to start a marketing plan based on that, which is a whole other thing. But that's where I envision myself. So what does that mean? 12 photo shoots, revamping my website, planning, you know, uh, my marketing on some level. Now let's break it down. How long does each photo shoot take? What is a realistic time frame to kind of get the person, schedule them, knowing that people have to work with various schedules? Once I know all these things, or at least on some level, I can start to work out my schedule. If I say, okay, well, I can devote one full day a week to doing this. And let's say that every other week, I can be guaranteed to have a subject because people have schedules, right? That means we're talking 24 weeks out. Now, during that time period, I'm doing the other things too. I'm revamping my website. Can I devote time to do that? And I think about that and I break these things down all as separate tasks. And each one becomes their own deadline. By the end of this month, I need to have shot two portraits, right? I need to have moved this far on my website. And I can create all these little mini deadlines that lead to the bigger one, which again allows me to evaluate if I am on track or not. So let's take a look at this in practice. For instance, Patagonia has set up something they call flex time, where basically they give their employees time off or time to do activities when it's the best time to do it. Skiing in the winter, Surfing in the summer, I guess, right? <laughs> and basically what you get is happier people. They are motivated to do the work they can do because they know that when the time comes they want to do the fun they want to have, you'll get it. Also, Google uh, tells you to take 20% of your week to do personal projects. Great. When I, this is an example from my real life, my real life, this is an example from my life, when I was working at Reebok, and I don't know they still do this, they would do that with the design department. They would take one day a week where they could just go off and do stuff because they felt like the people designing the shoes needed to do things like go to art museums and read books and go to movies to be motivated. And they would literally give them the time off to do it. And when I say time off, I mean paid time off. We can also look at the idea of so much more remote work going on ever since the pandemic and people getting more work. It's been shown people get more work done often when they're working remote because they can work when they are fully motivated to work, and if they need to take a quick break for something, they can do it. Also, some places have taken into the account the idea of, which I don't know why this isn't a standard everywhere, that 
the work you do is what matters, not the hours you work. That motivates people to get things done and basically plan their own schedules to work when they're the most efficient. If you're not good at 9 a.m., but you can crank at 11, go out and walk in the morning. Do the things you want to do. Do your grocery shopping. Do the other things besides work. Then sit down and work and get it done. Why should the company care that you sat there for those first two hours getting almost nothing done if in the end you get your job done? These are things that companies are putting into effect. Big companies are thinking about. So we as individuals have to also think that way. Give ourselves the freedom, the flexibility to work when we are the most motivated, but make sure that we give ourselves enough pressure so that we'll be at least a little motivated. Okay, so we've got to the end of the video here. We've talked about why the, having the optimum level of stress, if you will, is the best way to go. Not too little, not too much. How to motivate ourselves when we're kind of not there. How to take breaks so we avoid burnout. And how to have kind of a flexible schedule so we do the work we really want to do when we want to do it, but still with our deadlines, get everything done. If this has been helpful or if you have other ideas or you have questions, please do make a comment below. I love to hear from you. Also, like the video, subscribe to the channel, do all those good things. I'm going to be putting out more and more videos like this in the future, so just keep an eye out and I'll talk to you soon.